Hello. Today we will talk about the first new integration rule, which is called the substitution rule. First of all, let's start uh, with the known formulas for anti-differentiation, the direct antiderivatives. Direct meaning that we will we simply reversing differentiation. Okay, that means that's all of the formulas. You may look at the slides and you may pause the video and make sure that we know all of them. Maybe number 11, we still don't know, but we will try to figure out this integral, like what is the integral of tangent of x. I think we need that new rule, the u substitution. Okay. What we can do, we will start with just differentiating this function because we know that integration is the anti-differentiation. We're looking for the we, we're looking for the original function having the derivative, having the rate of change of the function. And we did learn lots of differentiation rules, product rule, quotient rule, chain rule. Now we will try to reverse them. Almost every single integration rule has behind the differentiation rule. Behind this new substitution rule, we will call U substitution rule for integration. The chain rule is CTIC. Okay, so let's start with this. Derivative of natural log of x squared plus one is one over x squared plus one. Follow the chain rule times derivative of x squared plus one, which is two x. Okay, now what I can do, I can rewrite the function 2x over x squared plus 1. Yeah? What is the antiderivative? Of course, natural log of x squared plus 1. And let me put the constant c just to have the most general form. Of course, we reverse in fundamental theorem of calculus. Now it's easy because we know and why this is the and why this function one the why the logarithmic function ln of x squared plus one is the antiderivative because when we differentiating we getting back the integral. Okay, let's see the next one. Sine of x cubed plus one. Derivative of sine is cosine of the same input, the same argument, the same angle, times derivative of that angle, which is 3x squared. And the same thing. I can say that antiderivative for cosine of x cubed plus 1 times 3x squared dx is nothing else like sine of x cubed plus 1. And let's add the constant c. Okay, and maybe one more. Derivative of e to the power of sine of x is e to the power of sine of x, exponential rule, the same function, times derivative of the exponent, derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Okay, now I can take this function e to the power of sine of x times cosine of x. And the antiderivative for this, the original function that we were differentiating was just e to the power of sine of x. And for now, let's add the constant c. Okay, that's we can, we can nicely actually see, I mean, we do have, we do have the answers. Of course, it will not always be the situation that we will have the original function, right? Because this is the original function. This is the original function. And of course, that's our antiderivative if we will have the rate. But what we will have, we will have that rate of change. And we may notice the first question is the quotient. The second question is product. And actually, the third one is also a product. I mean, we theoretically anti differentiate. We know the anti derivatives for quotient, product, and another like product. Mm -hmm. because we didn't have it before. That means this will be, this, we will use, we will use that rule, but what is important? Let's look maybe at the first example, the second example. We have function cosine of x cubed plus one. And then we have that part. We of course know, we of course know that that part 
is the derivative of this. I mean, the derivative of the inner function. Yeah? Wolf to know it because we know was the part of the chain rule. And the same here, 2x is the derivative of this. Cosine of x is derivative of the inner function because e to the power of sine of x is a compound function. Right? That we do have some pattern. We will, we kind of like, we see the product or the quotient, but we see two functions. One of them is comp like compound, more complex. And looking at this more complex, we can identify the inner function. Okay? And derivative of, the, of that inner function is sitting also in the integrand and waiting to be used to be converted to actually find for all expression to find the antiderivative. Okay, that's me. that will be the basic idea. Let's put nicely everything in the formula way. Okay, that's me. one more time. We have this, we did similar. Uh, actually, I can show you the entire screen. We have an integral 3x squared times sine of x cubed. Okay. First of all, we see product and we cannot simplify because previously when we had a product of two polynomials, we can multiply them together. We can have expanded form and integrate term by term. This one, we will not avoid this product. We, we have this product. Okay, but now that's what we just learned. We see one function and we see the second function. We see two functions, two factors. 3x three, three squared, simple. Sine of x cubed, compound. Sine function is the outer function. x cubed is the inner function. So that's how we will identify. Let's grab that inner function, x cubed, that's the inner function. And we have to like adopt like problem solving strategy. We will introduce a new variable, u. <laughs> of course, I will let that x cube to be u, okay? And now, since I decided to use the new variable u, I will rewrite the entire integral in terms of u, including dx, because dx is part of, it's like a differential, it's part of the derivative. That's what we will do. Having this, u is x cube. Uh, we will differentiate, okay? Derivative of u, for now, I can say du dx, because we can say u prime, but it's not helpful, du dx. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Now, I will solve this for du only, okay? That means du is 3x squared dx. Now, let's see if I can rewrite. I have to remove all of the x variables and put the u. I can change a little bit the order. Sine x cubed times 3x squared dx. And we can see that 3x squared dx, it happens to be the derivative of that x cubed. This part can be rewrite as a du from our table. And x cubed is just u. That's what we decided. Our integral looks like sine of u du. Right? So easy. Of course, doing this extra, introducing this one extra variable, uh, we did simplify our integral. Sine of u du. Integral of sine of u is negative cosine. I can use actually the red color because I use the u. Negative cosine of u plus the constant c. And at the end, at the end, um, at the end, instead of u, we can substitute back x cube just to finish with just to finish with um, original variable, okay? 
that's what that's what we will do. This is the u substitution. Okay. We change the we did change the variable. Okay. And actually, I do have the same integral. I did I did type it the solution for you. That means the the oh no, that's actually the quantity not under the square root because I had a different function. The inner, the inner quantity, we let to be u x cube, and then we differentiate, and we will most likely like say derivative of u is just du. We will call it with differentials. Derivative of x cube is three x squared dx. Okay, and then I replace everything because this is u, this is du, one more time, u, du, integral of sine of u is negative cosine of u and negative cosine of x cubed because at the end, we're getting back to the original variable. Okay, this is the general page with the formula. Using the substitution method, we will most likely see a product of two functions. And as I, and as I said, uh, we, will, we will like look at both of the functions and we have to look at the compound function, more complex, and grab the inner function. Yeah, the inner function in this case is g of x. And then hopefully the other part will appear to be a derivative of that inner function g prime okay? and then we can rewrite this integral in terms of u and the point is of course to simplify and then hopefully the direct antiderivative will give us the answer and we can call substitution rule or of course change of the variable formula change of the variable okay let's practice and we will get this idea the same thing. I have a couple of notes before we start practicing. Uh, of course, substitution rule has the chain rule behind, compound function, inner function, derivative of the inner function. Uh, the idea is to uh, simplify our work from the relatively complicated integral by the u substitution with simplifying. The main challenge, of course, is to use the appropriate substitution. Sometimes I even call that this is a little bit of art. I like saying this, finding the right substitution, because when we're looking at the entire integrand, we may not know right away. And it's perfectly normal to pick the wrong expression for the, u, uh, um, for the new u variable. If, if you realize something is wrong, we can delete everything and start from the beginning. Yeah, that's a normal process. Uh, yeah, and it's, um, it's of course a little bit complicated, but like when we see the composition function, maybe we can, we can say that u is the inner function. That's what I was suggesting. Not always works this way, but most of the time. Okay, let's try. Evaluate the indefinite integral uh, of square root of one plus x squared times two x dx. Two x is not under the square root. We do see square root of one plus x squared and we also see two x. Of course, the square root function is the compound function and the inner function is one plus x squared. That's what we will decide. And that's what we will do for the u substitution. Okay, u is one plus x squared. Let's differentiate. Derivative of u is du. Derivative of one plus x squared is two x dx. And we can nicely see two x dx, two x dx, perfect. Is that derivative is there we can replace with du because we have to replace everything. Okay, so this will be, that's du, and this is square root of u because the inner quantity was u. 
okay? We have to always remember when we decided to use the U substitution, we cannot mix like X and U variables. Now, X will be not really welcome uh, around U, around the U variable, okay? We have nice direct formula. U to the power of one half du, we will use our power rule. We will add one to one half. U to the power of three halves over three halves. We can flip three halves. And now, just at the end, instead of u, we will substitute back one plus x squared. That's everything. Yeah, nice process. Another one. 4x cubed times sine of x to the power of 4. Now we can see no way that we will avoid this product. We see 4x cubed and we see sine of x to the power of 4. Trigonometric function sine in this case is the compound function because sine is the outer function, x to the power of four is the inner function. Let's grab that inner function, x to the power of four. Derivative of u is du. Derivative of x to the power of four, four x cubed dx. We have to have this differential. And you may notice I change, I change the order but 4x cubed dx, 4x cubed dx, perfect. This is du. Sine of u, du. Sine of u, du. Integral of sine is negative cosine. Integral of sine u, du, is negative cosine u, plus the constant c. And at the end, instead of u, we're putting back the original formula, x to the power of 4. Done. Integral of x over square root of one minus x to the power of uh, four, oh, one minus four x squared dx. Okay, now we do not see product, but we see the quotient of two functions, x and square root of the inner quantity. Let's use the same, yes, let's use the same tool. I will grab that inner function and I will name it u. u is one minus four x squared. Let's differentiate. Derivative of u is du. Derivative of one minus four x squared is negative eight x dx dx. Okay, we have a small, small challenge in the integrand, I can see x dx, and I do not see negative eight, x dx. Then I will solve this for x dx. I will just divide by negative eight, negative one eight du. If we have a, like a difference with like the co coefficient constant only is the difference, we can work it out. Yeah? It will be problem if for instance our derivative here, it will be like x squared, x cubed, or something else, like with the x, then we can't do it. But the constant is the constant. It's not a problem. Okay, that's mean now this part, x dx, will be replaced with negative 1, 8 du. It's okay. Let's do it. x dx, again, is negative one eight du, but I did place negative one eight since we have a product in front and du of course stays outside. And denominator is square root of u because that was the u. That's how we defined u. Okay, negative one eight is just the extra constant. One over square root of u du is u to the negative half and now direct antiderivative. We will add one, adding one to negative half, we have one half, u to the power of one half over one half. We can flip one half, it will be multiplying by two, negative one fourth, u to the half is square root of u, plus the constant c, of course. Now, at the end, we will put, instead of u, one minus four x squared, done. Integral of sine to the power of 4x 
times cosine of x, dx. Okay, it's mean what we see that I type. Okay, I type it, but let's, first of all, I can rewrite possibly this integrand like that, because then we can see we have sine and cosine. Sine is taken to the power of four. Then I'm assuming that the power of four is the power function, outer function. Sine of x is the inner function. And let's use this as a u u will be sine of x because this is still inner function. I'm still not doing nothing different. I'm just repeating that hint, that suggestion that we, we've got at the beginning. Uh, derivative of u is du. Derivative of sine of x is cosine of x dx. And perfect. Oh, that's what I thought. I didn't finish. Cosine of x dx. This is du. And then this is u, sine of x is u, to the power of 4. We did rewrite the integral in terms of u. I can write a little bit clearer. u to the power of 4 du is just u to the power of 5 over 5, not 6, over 5. And at the end, we can substitute sine of x. And I can maybe use the notation that we always use in the textbooks, sine to the power of 5x over 5 plus the constant. OK? Nothing, yes, nothing crazy. Let's keep working. Oh, sine of 4x, just sine of 4x. Now, we don't really see product, but we can still see the inner function, the inner function 4x. Let's try, okay, let's try to, to do this. u will be 4x, because we still have to figure out how that 4 will affect the answer. Derivative of u is du, derivative of 4x is 4 dx. Okay, 4 dx. We do not have 4, then I will divide by 4. 1 4 of du is dx. Okay, let's work it out. dx is 1 4 of du. Sine and 4x, we decided to be u. Okay, let's put that constant outside, and we only end up having one fourth, but sine of u du. Integral of sine is actually negative cosine u because, and I can put negative one fourth cosine, and instead of u, we can put four x. Okay, so we can see sine, integral of sine, because we will try to figure out the formula integral of sine and if this inner function is a linear function like we will only have a coefficient a and x is taken to the power of one just the linear then let's see integral of sine is negative cosine of the same input the same angle and that a that coefficient a we can see how it affects the answer we will divide by this, multiply by one over a, one over four. We don't, it is the u substitution behind, but we can do it right away. Okay, we have cosine, the same thing. You can try the u substitution. That will be the u substitution. You can write the whole process, but we will know this. Integral of cosine is sine, Cosine of 10x, because that's sine of 10x, and divide by 110. That's how the u substitution will give us that coefficient. And yes, I do have these formulas. We don't have to really remember. I know that sometimes students like to use it right away. You can still do integrate through the u substitution. Okay couple of more integrals and we will be done with this section.
finally, finally tangent effects. I did mention a couple of times. Okay, first of all, we will rewrite sine of x over cosine of x. Because tangent on its own, it will be not helpful in this case. And now I see sine of x and cosine of x. And theoretically, both of them are uh, not exactly like the compound functions. They are just simple function. But if we will look closer, I can say that I do have sine of x and we do have one over cosine of x. We don't really have cosine. That means I can consider that one over cosine of x is the compound function, the rational function, and cosine is the inner function. Let's do the substitution. Cosine of x, I will let u to be cosine of x. Derivative of u is du, derivative of cosine is negative sine of x dx. We don't have negative, I will move on the other side. Sine of x dx is negative du. I can rewrite sine of x dx. Let's try. One over cosine is u. Uh, sine of x dx is negative du. That actually looks weird. I can put negative in front of, yes, in front of the, because it's a constant. Okay, and now integral of one over u du, I will keep negative, is natural log of u plus the constant c. We almost there. We organize nicely. Uh, in, instead of u, we can put cosine of x. And yes, this is the integral of tangent of x, negative ln of cosine of x plus one, plus the constant c. However, what we may see, that negative in front as a coefficient in front of the logarithmic, we can put as a negative one, we can put as an exponent. Cosine to the negative one, it's one over cosine. And one over cosine is secant of x. One over cosine of x is secant of x. And probably when you will search in the textbook or in the internet for the integral of tangent of x, it will be natural log of secant of x. It could be negative natural log of cosine, but we know where this negative went. It makes it, uh, it become a curve, um, exponent and then negative exponent means that we're flipping the number. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. Okay, now we know integral of tangent of x dx is natural log secant of x plus the constant. Okay, mm. oh, let's look at this one. Integral of x times square root of one plus x. Okay, um, we see the product x is a simple function. Square root of one plus x is the, the one plus x is the inner function. Oh, we will let u to be one plus x. Derivative of u is du, derivative of one plus x is one dx. Oh, interesting. Okay, what's happened? We will have square root of u. Okay, dx becomes just du, but we do have a small problem. We didn't cancel x, and we're not allowed to put x together with u. That, that will be not good to have. I mean, we, we have a two variable, three variables like functions, but that calculus free, and then differential equations, that's different. Now we have to have one variable. We have to find a way to rewrite that x that left in terms of u. And of course, the only equation that it makes sense is the original substitution. If we will solve this equation for x, we will have u minus one, u minus one. That's what we will do. Okay, that's one extra step. Okay, let's check. 
u minus one square root of u du. We still have a product. However, now we can distribute u times root u, one times root u is just root u. We can get a common factor. u times root u is u to the power of one times u to the power of one half. One plus one half is three halves. Square root of u is just exponent one half. Now we can use the formula. U to the power of three halves is u to the power of five halves over five halves. U to the power of one half is three halves, three halves. Okay, almost correct. Oh, we have to flip a fraction, two over five, two over five, U to the power of five halves, minus actually, I have to be careful, minus, 2 over 3, u to the power of 3 over 2 plus the constant. And of course, instead of like writing u, I will put back the original x variable 1 plus x. That's the final answer. But please, yeah, please pause this slide possibly and check, okay, check the blue, the blue addition. Okay, that's what we will occasionally do. Okay, I can keep it this one for you. Oh, let's try this one. Sign of the square root of x over square root of x. Of course, the sign of the square root of x looks compound function, sign is outer, and that square root of x is inner function. Let's try. Let's let u to be the inner function square root of x. Derivative of u is du. Derivative of the square root of x is 1 over 2 square root of x dx. And it's nice because dx over square root of x, we may see that part can be cancelled out. But we don't have 1 half. I will multiply by 2. And now 1 over root x dx, this will be 2 du. We managed to do this and now let's see. We have sine of square root of x which is sine of u and times 2 du. Let's put 2 just sine of u. Integral of sine is negative cosine of u plus the constant c, negative two cosine, and u is square root of x. This is the final answer. And now you can like keep working. You can of course do your homework assignment online, the written homework assignment, and yeah, that's how you can practice. And I will even redo all of the problems from this session. Before we finish this session, let's do a couple of problems with the u substitution and definite integral. Let's see how the limits of integrations are affected by the new variable. Okay. Yes, we have two methods, okay? We will depend. I mean, both of them will give us the same answer and both of them are almost the same, just a couple of different steps at some point. <laughs> okay. Okay, for instance, did I solve this one? Oh, okay, I do have a room for solving. I have solution, but we don't have to look at it. Okay, let's evaluate the integral from zero to four, square root of two x plus one. We see just one function, but definitely two x plus one is the inner function. Okay, let me put two x plus one, that's u. Derivative of u is du. Derivative of 2x plus 1 is 2 dx. We don't see 2, then we will have 1 half du is dx. Okay. And let's rewrite. Square root of u and dx is 1 half du. 1 half square root of u du. Okay. We can do this and let's actually, okay, let's, let's um, finish this. This will be u to the power of one half. And let's 
integrate. Integral of u to the power of one half du is u to the power of three halves over three halves. I will not put the constant c in a minute. Actually, maybe I can. Oh, yeah, I have the next slide for the different method. Flipping three halves, we will have two thirds times one half is one third. And this will be square root of u cube. OK, now, if this is indefinite integral, we will just put plus c. We will substitute back to x plus 1, and we will be done. But what we can do, we don't have plus the constant c because we know that they will cancel out. One of the methods that we can do is actually, since we did rewrite everything in terms, in terms of u, we will also need a new limits of integration, new bounds, because that zero was the x value. And that four is also the x value because everything is in terms of x. So let's find a new limits of integration. OK. We did have x equals to 0. Now we're looking for the corresponding u. And u was defined as a 2x plus 1. We will basically use this formula. 2 times x, x is 0, plus 1. It is 1. Yeah, I can actually put new limits of integration. Instead of 0, we will put 1. And now I can put 1, 1, 1. Uh, this will be 1, and this will be 1, right? Because I didn't put the limits before. OK, now let's find the other one. If x is 4, the upper limit, u will be 2 times 4 plus 1. Because we can see I'm using the substitution the formula, 8, 9, OK, really good. 9 from 1 to 9, 9, 9, 9, and 9. That's how we can, that's our, that's, that's the first method. And I would say we always looking for the new limits of integration. It's a little bit easier. I can, I can show you how we can do different, but let's finish this. We remember fundamental theorem of calculus. Let's substitute 9, the upper limit, and then cube minus, let's substitute lower limit and cube. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 cube is 27. 27 divided by 3 is 9. 9 minus 1 third. OK, is 8 and 2 thirds. We can leave it in that mixed form. OK, and I believe, oh, I have the answer 26 over 3, but this is 26 over 3. OK, and yes, I also have the new limits. We can see 9 and 1. Yeah, I, type, I minimize my solution. But also, let's look at the second way. OK, let's look at the second way. Let's repeat. 2x plus 1 is u. du is 2 dx, we don't have to, we will put one half du is dx. I'm just repeating the same thing. Integral of square root of u, dx is one half du. Okay, one half u to the power of one half. Okay, one half u to the power of three halves, that's the integral, and three halves. And this will be one third, and u to the power of three halves is square root of u cube. And now we, okay, what we need the limits, but what we will do, we will finish this like we were doing with indefinite integral. Instead of u, I will put 2x plus 1. Yeah. We can do it instead of you. And again, if this will be indefinite integral, I can add constant c. That's our answer. But no, we have the limits. And since we get back to the original variable x, I can use the original 0 and 4, because this is x value and this is x value, because I do have x. 
Okay. But you may notice we're not putting zero and four as soon as we have u. We have to find the new limits if we would like to put, but we can keep it without the limits. And now let's substitute. Uh, substituting four, two times four plus one, and substituting zero, two times zero plus one, of course, subtracting. This will be nine, and this will be one. Yeah, you can see it's the same thing, the same thing, nine and one. The only thing that we like, we're doing the substitution inside, inside. And of course, the answer is what was the answer? Eight and two thirds. You can check the solution on the other side. We can do this, but we have to remember to, to get back to the original expression. But I would say we use, we usually using the new limits of integration. Okay, let's do one more. I can find something nice. Yeah, this is just the formula. Uh, oh, let's do this one. Tangent cube theta times secant square theta d theta from zero to pi over four. Okay, we see tangent theta cube. We also see secant square theta, but I will keep it this way because you may realize that if we will let u to be that inner function tangent, what is the derivative of tangent? It's sitting and waiting for us to be canceled out. Derivative of u is du. Derivative of tangent theta is secant square theta d theta. Yes. Let's see. This is u cube. And this is just du. Secant square theta d theta. Really nice. It's nice if one of the function is the derivative of the inner function. Then perfect. Okay, integral of u cube is u to the power of 4 over 4, and we will find the new limits of integration. New bounds, new limits of integration. Okay, x was actually theta. Theta is 0, theta is pi over 4. Theta is 0 then we have to compute the corresponding u value. u was defined as a tangent theta. Tan zero is actually also zero. It looks like the same, but it's a new value. I can use maybe the blue color. That's zero, zero. Okay, that's the new value. Now, if theta is pi over four, the corresponding u value it will be tangent at pi over four. Tangent at 45, we know we have to know our unit circle, it's one. Okay, that means one is a new limit. Instead of pi over four, we can put one. Okay, let's define, now actually I can, we can substitute one to the power of four and we can substitute zero but of course, zero is zero, one over four. That's the final answer. Okay, but please remember about the new limits of integration. Okay, I think we solve lots of integrals. Uh, you may practice them again. You may even open the section in the textbook and look at the couple of first exercise. They are always helpful. And yes, just keep integrating because we will have lots of integrals in our final exam. Thank you.